بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the compassion and the merciful, all praise is due to Allah And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions and all of his followers until the day of resurrection I'd like to welcome you to this episode continuing on the subject of kinship ties and the importance of maintaining and upholding these ties to the best in order to reach Allah's pleasure. And now we're touching a very, very important subject, which is how to relate to non-Muslim kin and relatives. And obviously, we live in this world where there are Muslims and non-Muslims. And obviously, we have some Muslims, alhamdulillah, who came from families who were not following Islam, who are not Muslims, and yet they became Muslims themselves, alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam, they wanted to live by Islam, and they still have those relationships with their family members, with their parents, with their grandparents, with their children, with their uncles and aunts and with their cousins and so on and so forth. Now, what would be the position of Islam in this regard? First, let us think of the message of the Prophet وسلم, which is based on rahmah and kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Addressing the Prophet وسلم, saying, we have not sent you except as a mercy to mankind, to all the world, to all peoples. And in this light of the message of mercy of the Prophet وسلم, we know that it is indeed an encouragement for us to have good relations with people who do not fight with the Muslims, those who do not wage war against Islam and Muslims. And if that is the case, then these people are so much into good relations with us, we shall maintain these good relations. So we can distinguish between enemies of Islam who do not want Islam and the Muslims and who plot and fight. And these people have to be avoided and since they make us in the categorization of enemies to them, then obviously we shall deal with the same thing. We cannot trust these people. We cannot deal with them on that basis of love and compassion because they haven't done so with us. In fact, they want to harm the Muslims. They want to harm the individuals within their own families or outside their own families. Of course, we can deal with them with justice, yes, but we do not give them the love and compassion that we may give to those who are not enemies with Islam. That's the first thing. The second point is regarding relatives, especially parents who are not, in fact, enemies to Islam and who give their own children or relatives, if they become Muslims, the choice to do this and to worship Allah as they wish, if they give them that freedom, then obviously we need to be kind to them, we need to approach them, and we need to build some good relationships with them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed us, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين إنما ينهاكم الله على الذين قاتلوكم في الدين وأخرجوكم من دياركم وظاهروا على إخراجكم أن تولهم ومن يتولهم فأولئك هم الظالمون Allah says in the glorious Quran Allah does not prohibit you from those who have not fought you in your religion 
and they have not driven you out of your own houses and places, that you would be kind to them and to be just with them, for Allah loves those who are just. But Allah would prohibit you from approaching those with kindness who fight you. Those who fight you in your religion. And they supported those who want to drive you away from your own homes and tawallahum to be their own loyal friends against Muslims. That is the point. It's not that we cannot take friends from among the non-Muslims. We can take friends as long as they don't ask us to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can build that relationship in order to call them to Islam. So if they are in that status, then obviously we need to extend a hand of justice, a hand of friendliness in order to bring them closer, to show them the goodness of Islam, to expose them to the message of mercy brought by the Prophet ﷺ. This is very, very important. And of course, part of that is to be in good relationship with those kin who are not Muslims. Obviously, starting with the parents, because the parents in particular have this very special status where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it so clearly as he said, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Allah says the meaning of which in the glorious Quran if they contend with you so that you would associate partners with Allah do not obey them. وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ To associate with me any partner which you have no knowledge of, obviously, no one would associate partners with Allah because they have no knowledge of having anyone who deserves to be with Allah because no one ever is in a position to be associated with Allah in His worship. فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Obviously, do not obey them in this respect. وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ Meaning that these parents would be non-Muslims, obviously, but also they could drive you to non-Islam. Look at the expression of the ayah. وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ Even they try to force you to contend with you, to go into shirk, and to commit this terrible and grave crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by associating partners with him in his worship, do not obey them. Yet, Allah says, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا But have a good company of them in this life with goodness, with what is known to be good, meaning be kind to them, be generous to them, obey them in things that are not wrong in Islam, approach them with humbleness, show them that you're still their son or their daughter, and show them the affection that they deserve. That's what وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ And follow the path of those who have returned to me, meaning the Prophet ﷺ and the believers, and not to follow the path of these non-believers. Obviously, to me is your return, meaning you and your parents. I'll be the judge among you on the day of judgment. Look at these great and nice expressions showing us how important it is to be kind to the parents even if they're non-Muslims.
starting with the mother again because she has more right on us than the father and the father comes next to that and obviously how would you severe a relationship with someone who bore you in her body and carried you all these months and then nursed you from her own chest and then raised you took care of you until you become a full-fledged human being now you don't want to recognize that that's not one of the good manners that a Muslim is supposed to have that's why for a Muslim yes you need to show them how Islam is good how compassionate you are to them because Islam encourages you to be so good to your parents whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims as long as they don't force you I'll continue with more on this very very important topic in a short while so please stay around for this break <laughs> We are back. And as I mentioned before the break, we are to be firm in our belief, but at the same time, we need to be compassionate and kind to our parents because Allah asks us to be just and to be even kind to the non believers who do not fight us, who do not drive us away from our homes. What about the parents? The parents have more right upon us than the general non-Muslim community around us. And we intermingle because of the nature of what is taking place today as citizens, as neighbors, as people living in the same country, in the same place. We work closely with each other and so on. But this doesn't mean that we submit to these people, to their pressures, to drive us away from our deen. No, but relatives in particular have to be respected in terms of maintaining that relationship to the best of ability for each one of us. Obviously, when you are kind to parents and when you approach them and stay in contact with them, that would lead them to accepting Islam with dua and prayer, as I understand. One of the great da'is, mashallah, who has his own programs on this channel, mashallah, he was very much, when he accepted Islam, after his father, he kept seeking the Islam of his father by being kind to him, by being in contact with him, and he kept him in good company, he kept all the great and good relationship with him until, mashallah, this old man, the father of this Da'i, accepted Islam and finally, mashallah, this Da'i had a great relief. And finally, I witnessed the prayer on him when he died. And I took this Da'i with me in the car. And I said, mashallah, we went to the graveyard together. And he said, you know, today I'm so sad because of the death of my father. But at the same time, I'm so happy that he died in the state of Islam. Well, he kept that relationship with him until, alhamdulillah, this father accepted Islam. And we went together, put him in the grave. And indeed, he paid tribute to him. And he felt that he did the right thing indeed. He did by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that kind of position and stand is there for any Muslim who had non-Muslim parents, then that's the way it should be, unless they are staunch enemies of Islam, where you need to avoid obeying them in anything that will lead you away and out of Islam. The second thing is regarding the non-Muslims who indeed sh see what we do in terms of that relationship. Obviously, they will be influenced they will at least lessen their negative attitudes toward Islam by seeing how kindly we treat our relatives. Even if we become Muslims, we don't forget our grandfathers, we don't forget our children, we don't forget our aunts and uncles, we don't forget our cousins, 
we reach them from time to time. In fact, we shall make dua for them. In fact, the Prophet وسلم, when this man came to him from Dos, which is a tribe in the western part of the Arabian Peninsula, he came to Medina and he said, I came from my own people who rejected Islam and please make dua for them. The Prophet وسلم, raised his hand and said, Allahumma hdi dawsan wa'ti bihim muslimin. O oh Allah, guide dawse, the whole family, and bring them as Muslims. And indeed, many of them accepted Islam. And among them is a very famous Sahabi, may Allah be pleased with him, Abu Huraira Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda, who reported many hadiths. He was the highest in the number of hadiths reported from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he was from this particular tribe. And that's an answer to the dua made by the Prophet ﷺ. What we need to emphasize, respected brothers and sisters, is that non-Muslim relatives have a right upon us as the Muslims because in the general terms, the Prophet ﷺ says, لا يدخل الجنة قاطع Many, one who is severing relations with relatives will not enter Jannah. And that is a general term. Of course, we understand that there are more greater rights for Muslims and believers than non-Muslims. Yet when it comes to relatives, when it comes to those kin whom are related with us with blood, we need to respect that and we need to in fact, approach them with the sense of bringing them closer to Islam and yet at the same time help them at the times of difficulty and hardships and ease their sufferings if they suffer from any illness and so on and so forth. In fact, we have seen how we approach even non-relatives and I know that there was an old man who was very sick and he felt lonely. No one came to him from his own relatives, but he had a Muslim neighbor and that Muslim neighbor kept that relationship with him until this man went to the hospital because of sickness. He was very old, yet he approached him and he was kind to him. And subhanAllah, this man was moved by this. And he said, why are you doing this to me? Well, he said, I need to be first as a human and there is a reward for being kind to you and because of that and because of the services and compassion this man showed this very old non-Muslim he accepted Islam in his bed before his death and he only lived in Islam for probably a couple of months and then after this he died so Allah wanted for him to die in the state of Islam. So what about your relatives? If you're a Muslim and your parents and your relatives are not Muslim, shouldn't they have a right upon you? Yes, they do. They do indeed. And therefore, we need to help our relatives to understand. Let me say even more than that. Even your Muslim relatives who are doing something wrong, they need to be advised, they need to be approached and to be helped in this regard. One of the duties upon us towards our relatives is to guide them towards the truth, to guide them towards being close to Islam as much as possible. If you see something wrong with them, go and advise them. If you see something right, go and encourage them. If we keep this practice, obviously we will enhance this relationship upon what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every relationship that we establish, whether with Muslims or non-Muslims, has to be established on this basis, on the basis of pleasing Allah and following His commandments. And obviously we have so many out there from the relatives that we have seen the evidence Masha'Allah, from the practice of good Muslims who were so much into good 
relationships with their own kin, that these kin, after some time, became soft in their position towards Islam. Obviously, this doesn't mean that we need to go along with them in their disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they have their own non-Islamic celebrations or festivities, or if they have occasions where they associate partners with Allah, or if they have parties where liquor or wine is being served and so on and so forth, obviously we need to stop. There is no point in being in contact with them or sharing with them, thinking that if we share these happy moments or exchange greeting cards with them on these non-Islamic occasions. But as long as this is a normal thing, such as when they have a birth, we need to congratulate them on this. No problem. In fact, we make dua for the new baby to be guided to the truth. Also, if they have a loss of life, we go and console them. And it would be an opportunity for us to introduce the Islamic position towards the concept of death and the concept of life. There are many ways. As long as we have the guide clear in our minds regarding what to do and what not to do, we will be able to achieve many great results by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah wants us to have good relations with people who are related to us in blood. And as long as they are our relatives, we shall not turn away from them, but also care about ways to invite them to the truth ways to help them and of course if you share these things with them whether they are being males or females as long as they are females like your aunts your grandmother your cousins whom you cannot see them alone for example however we need we need to maintain that relationship and look for ways to show them the beauty of islam show them how we can be very, very much humane in our relationships, which will open the door wide open for them. Plus, we need to make the dua for them and ask them to come into the folds of Islam because that would be the ultimate happiness for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all those hearts who are turning away from the truth to the right path by your own permission, for you are so close to us and you are answering our prayers wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh